On the fifth day of Christmas, PGC made for me cinnamon bread. This is Will. He's gonna make a bread. Cinnamon bread. For the holidays. You can make it any time of the year you want. But it has the cinnamon, so it's kind of thematic with the Christmas themes. Yeah, I would say that that my dog should shut up and that cinnamon is probably one of the most Christmassy spices out of ten. Doctor's survey. Alright. Well, let's make let's, so let's, let's get started. Do, do the stuff. Okay. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is mixing some butter and milk. So, you know, we're gonna melt three-fourths stick of butter, six tablespoons. All right, one, two, oh, it's got numbers here. I don't even need to count. This is like a, the yeast mixture that you'll be pouring and mixing with the flour. So we're gonna be uh, mixing in a cup of milk into this butter. It's sizzling, so we're gonna turn it down just a little bit. Ooh, that's a nice pour shot. He's done this before. And just mix that in. Um, you're gonna wanna heat this up just a little bit, but not too hot, otherwise it'll kill the yeast when we add it into it. So we're gonna be mixing it a little bit with a mixing spoon. Perfect. And yeah, just mix it up. You want a relatively homogeneous, evenly mixed milk and butter right here. And then let it for just a little bit. We want the milk to heat up. Uh, now I'm gonna add in the yeast. It's had a little bit of time to simmer. You don't want it to be boiling, like I said. You don't want it too hot. Uh, unless you're gonna be baking a lot, it's better just to do the packets. It's the active dry yeast. You can use any type of yeast, really. It's not gonna really impact most people's baking. They always come in packets of three for some reason. And then uh, just add it in. And then mix it up. I still have the heat on low, but as soon as I mix this up, I'm actually going to be turning it off. Relatively mixed here, and then we'll just let that sit for the next 10 minutes. We can focus on the next part, which is going to be working on the bread floury base. Cool! Yeah! So, the yeast has had a chance to uh, activate here with the butter and milk, and if you look in closely, you can see some bubbles and stuff rising up on the side there. So now we're gonna go on with the next step of making our bread. Mixing two eggs. How many was that? Right here's one, right here's two. Two eggs. Two eggs, no more than two. I guess I'm making that face on camera. <laughs> okay, so the two eggs, and then we're also gonna be adding in a third cup of sugar. Sugar. Domino sugar, pure cane, granulated, granulated sugar. And then mix it. Break those yolks and stir. You're doing a great job, Will. Thanks. I don't know if that's true because I can't see what you're doing. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Should look all heavy. And then we're going to add in our yeast mixture. And stir that up. It'll look like bread later. <laughs> <laughs> looks kind of wet. <laughs> it looks like bread. <laughs> Spread's pretty wet. <laughs> Don't worry. Right now we're gonna add in some salt and flour. So I'm hoping this is salt. Yeah, one tisp. Cool. And then we're gonna add in about three and a half cups of flour. We want to add it in slowly so that way you can evenly mix it in. You don't have any weird pockets that are extra wet or something that are extra dry. We're gonna be adding it three and a half cups and half cup increments. You can use whatever flour you like, but I recommend using a bread flour. So bread flour takes a little longer, but the texture is supposed to be a little more flavorful. Bread flour for bread. More flour. More flour. <laughs> you tricked me. Oh my God. <laughs> Go Bucks. Fighting Irish. <laughs> It goes so long. Sports! This is the uh, first half cup of the flour. I'm adding it in slowly uh, by half cup increments so that way it's much more easy to mix it uniformly in with the uh, yeast mixture. Yeah, the yeast mixture. One cup. Make sure you get the edges up there. One and a half cups. Two cup mark. And you can see now it looks a lot less wet. <laughs> you prefer stirring clockwise or counterclockwise? Oh, clockwise. Do you have a preference, Phil? 
Nope. Two and a half cups. It's good not to lose count of where you are. Three cups. So at this point, it's getting pretty dry. You need to work to make sure that the entire mixture is actually being mixed. Instead will you of... use your hands? Uh, yes, I will use my hands here in a second. He's a maverick. Nobody's <laughs> ever done this before on film. It still looks kind of moist, you know? It is. That's because we still have to add like another half cup. That makes sense. I'm helping. Give it a little dump. Loose deuce? Loose deuce. And right now we're just gonna make sure that most of this flour gets mixed in there. There might be a little bit left over because the uh, bread is already saturated, but we'll find out here in a second. Oh man. <laughs> you're, you're... Nothing, Phil. Your kitchen is fine. <laughs> if you had stirred counterclockwise, like I told you to. I have to be at a progress. I'm sending you an invoice. <laughs> Not really. I mean, to be fair, this dough is getting pretty thick. In just a second here, we're gonna plop it on the uh, counter and knead it for a little while. Well, well, I only got like five or six more spoons. So. Okay, so that's pretty well mixed. Take your workstation, drizzle a little bit of flour on there so that it doesn't stick to the counter. And we're gonna plop it on there and knead it for a little bit. Put a little flour on top. And you're pretty much just gonna wanna knead it out thin and then fold it over and repeat. And um, you'll know when you're done when the dough is pretty much a uniform consistency. Five to 10 minutes. I have another question. Yeah. How do you know when you're in love? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Marlena. One of life's mysteries. How many, how many days before you bake the bread? You bake the bread on the first date? Can you take the bread in your bed? Uh, you can eat a bread in the bed. I wouldn't eat it with a fox, though. So. I'm gonna do this for about five to ten minutes. <laughs> All that kneading makes one tire tired. You know, bread sweats. We have the bread sweats. Can we be in a band called Bread Sweats? Bread Sweats! Alright, so what you're gonna do next is after you've kneaded it, it should look nice and voluptuous. You poke it, it sort of retains the shape. That's it's... a real nice spring. So now we're gonna put a little bit of canola oil into a bowl. Just so. I don't know how much that is. Maybe like a tablespoon if you want to actually measure it. All, all you really care about is it needs to be enough so that when you toss in your bread and you roll it around, it's enough to coat it in a thin layer of the canola oil. It's the most exciting part of bread making is let it sit for two hours. Uh, we'll want to either cover it with like saran wrap or a tea towel in a warm place to encourage yeast growth. What are we gonna do for two hours? Okay, so. I'm just gonna let it sit somewhere in the kitchen. And we'll check on it again in two hours. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> so, it's been about two hours since we let our bread sit to the side. It's a little bigger. Letting it sit longer is always better. The more time it sits, the longer it can get bigger. Honestly, you probably don't want it to go past, like, four hours. Then uh, what happens is the yeast can grow too much, so when you bake it, it ends up that it will emit too much carbon dioxide and then it will collapse. It'll taste fine. There won't be anything wrong with the bread. It just won't be as pretty. Now that we have it, we are going to work it into a rectangle. Just spread it out like you're kneading it. And you want to make sure you don't spread it out too wide because we're going to need to put it into a bread loaf pan. Relatively thin, but not too thin. That's pretty good. So what we're going to do now is the remaining two tablespoons of that stick of butter that we used to make the initial yeast mixture and spread it all over. Try and get most of the butter off your hands because it tastes better on the bread. And now we are going to make our cinnamon mixture and that's going to be a third cup of sugar, and then it's gonna be uh, two tablespoons of cinnamon. Most cinnamon is actually cassia. You say ketchup? Cassia. Ketchup? You want it to be a uniform light brown color. You should probably mix with the sides of the square bowl, so 90 degree strokes are preferable. Up, down, left, right. <laughs> I only deal with Euclidean directions. <laughs> so, we got our cinnamon mixture. That smells nice, looks good. We're gonna spread it 
with much gusto on top of the butter now. You can just sort of sprinkle it along you go, try and make sure it doesn't sort of blend in with the butter. So you can see here, it's not nearly thick enough. And then you get bored, so you can just sort of dump it on there like that. And now we're gonna roll it up. So start at one end. So just roll it up, nice and tight. Push it together just a little bit so the edges are a little more even. You made a weird sound. <laughs> and then... again. Ew. Pinch the seams shut. Looks like you're like, Bread it's kind of what I am doing. <laughs> Get our baking pan. Take about a tablespoon of butter. Spread it all over. The butter gives it a really nice crust. So don't be afraid to get it all up in there. And there we go. That <laughs> looks very nice. Seam side down, yes. Now again, what we're gonna do is let it sit yet again for about an hour and a half. See you then. <laughs> All right, so we've let our bread rise for a few hours and it is ready to put into the oven. First, we need to apply our egg wash. One egg, and then we're gonna add a splash of milk. I use whole milk just because that's what's on hand. Oh yeah, I can move this leftover. We're gonna top the bread with the chicken. That's the secret ingredient. <laughs> yeah, that chicken cinnamon bread. Most people, <laughs> most people don't know that. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna whisk this up real quick with a fork. Perpendicular strip. <laughs> Get it nice and mixed. Nice and moist. Nice and. That's perfect. So now we're gonna use this handy uh, pastry brush to apply our egg wash just like that. Apply it liberally. This is gonna give the bread a nice sheen. Yeah, that's pretty good. He said the name of the show! It's <laughs> entirely by accident. And now we're going to bake it at 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. Make sure you put it on a medium rack, not too high, too so that high. way it bakes evenly. We'll check on it again here in about 30 minutes and see if it needs any more time. Thank you. <laughs> so it's been about 45 minutes and our bread is looking like it's pretty much done. So we're gonna take it out. So you should let that cool for 15, 20 minutes before you try and remove it from the uh, pan. All right, so we've let the cinnamon bread cool for about 15, 20 minutes so far. Whatever. All right. Uh oh. Hey, there we go. We cut into the loaf now, and we got ourselves oh, a baby. nice, nice. tasty-looking oh, baby, oh, baby. cinnamon bread. What a guy! Let's eat it. Stick it in your gut. Mm. Tastes like onset diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh man. Oh, really good. Well, well, well. Merry Christmas. Hey, I want to eat something.